Hey guys, it's Adam from Loose Pixel, and I'm bringing you a little something kind of interestingly special because I'm an art channel, yet I'm about to present you with an audio review of the comparison between two headphones that a lot of the audio files out there haven't even presented yet. So it's kind of an exclusive first hands, hands on review and unboxing of the MSR 7s, original MSR 7s by Audio Technica to the MSR 7Bs, which I just got imported from Japan. They're not officially available in North America yet. Now I spoke with Audio Technica and they may be, don't take my word for it, don't flip out. They may be arriving before the end of 2018. I'm not sure though. Uh, they just told me to keep my eyes up on the forums around the end of the year. But they are released in Japan. So if you want to get these, you have to get these imported and prices may vary depending on the situation. I know like if I wanted to buy off of Amazon Canada, they're way overpriced. I got them for a good deal, but um, they're way overpriced. Now, with that said, why did I go through all that trouble for somebody who's not even an audiophile in that regard? Although I do pride myself in liking quality sound. I'm not, I, you know, I, I listen, I very often, often listen to what audiophiles say online and I disagree with a lot of what they say from my own personal experience. Let me give you a little bit of a quick synopsis of my experience with the MSR7s from Audio Technica and why I have these in my hand right now as my, or I have had these in my hands as my daily driver. I originally started with the DT770 Pros, the 80 ohms. I have a review right here where I compare the DT770 80 ohms to the uh, uh, Audio Technica M50Xs. At the time, they were cl comparable closely in terms of sound quality with a little bit more convenience from the M50Xs, a little bit more comfort for the DT770 Pros. I no longer hold that. I've had a chance to compare the DT770 Pro 80 ohms to the 250 ohm DT770s, to the Audio Technica Solid Bass, to the Sennheiser HD 650 and 600, and multiple other audiophile headphones when I went to an audiophile store here in Montreal. And the DT770 Pro 80 ohm remained the unrivaled champion. Uh, I completely fell in love with them. The, the, the clarity, the sound stage, the naturalness of the sound, the solid, clear, yet punchy lows. I could use them for monitoring. I loved listening to music with them and just my general day-to-day -day stuff. Completely fell in love with them. Then I compared them to the 250 ohm DT770s. Hated the sound. Way too sibilant. So bad, so I, if I pushed my amp past five, my ears felt like I was getting jabbed in the ears with needles. Then I compared it to the Audio Technica solid bass headphones. Mismarketed. They're not solid bass, they're solid treble. Better than the M50Xs in terms of clarity. I now find the M50Xs absolute garbage, but mismarketed. Uh, a bit too flat, very sibilant, nothing remarkable in terms of the bass. So, Although they were fine, they're perfectly good headphones and I didn't need the Bluetooth crap or whatever. I don't care for that. Then I compared them to the HD650 and 600s to Sennheiser. I, I tried those at home, was not at all impressed with the comfort, the look or the sound coming out of either of those Sennheisers. I found them flat, boring and minimally useful. If you want to monitor, sure, but who monitors with open back headphones? Uh, and the soundstage wasn't anything remarkable compared to the to the DT770s. So again, forget those. I was totally unimpressed with the Sennheisers and I stayed with the DT770s. I thought the DT770s were gonna be hands down reigning champion until I tried these, the MSR7s from Audio-Technica. Now why the M50Xs are the popular brand and not these ones blows me away because these are the ones that sound phenomenal in every stretch of the imagination. In fact, these ended up replacing my DT770 Pros, which I didn't think could happen. If I was to summarize these, and this goes, this, my opinion go, jumps in the face of a lot of what a lot of very reputable reviewers are, minus a few ex odd exceptions. These are everything that the DT770 Pro 80 ohms are with the added advantage of more clarity in the mids and the highs. What does this mean? Well, people claim, as and I agree with the fact, that the DT770s have beautiful, tight, detailed, present, satisfying lows. And a lot of people claim, reputable people claim, that the, that the MSR7s are lacking in the lows. Well, they're not. In fact, these are basically the same as the DT770s, 80 ohm. 
They have just as much bass, but it's equally tight, equally satisfying, equally high quality, but with the added advantage of added clarity and detail, which these do have. Comfort-wise, they're different but comparable. The plushness is fine. I tried these, the, the MSR7s with the M, uh, HM5 pads. I personally didn't care. Particularly, number one, if you're buying these with the gunmetal, if it's black on black, black pads with black headphones, fine. The brown HM5 doesn't match this and the white looks like garbage. They're big and they ruin the sound. Now, I'm not picky, not that picky, but I'm picky enough that when I put, th what I love about these was destroyed by the HM5s. It made these, it killed the lows and made them sibilant. It basically turned these into the DT770 250 ohms. I, I put them on 10 seconds, I went, scrap that, return them right away. The HM5 pads, forget about them, okay? And they didn't contribute much in terms of comfort either. The stock pads are perfectly good and they're perfectly balanced for these headphones. The Achilles heel. That. Now you only notice this only happens when you are taking them on and putting them off, right? Or putting them on and taking them off, I meant to say. Once they're on your head, they're not going to make any noise. But in taking them off, there's a little bit of the sound. They're built well, but they it make it gives them a bit of a cheap plastic sound. Not they're not cheap plastic. It gives them a cheap plastic sound to them. And it's annoying, right? It's a very kind of screechy sound. That's the only Achilles heel, but that's it. Apart from that, these have been my daily drivers. Detachable 3.5 non-proprietary cables, although they're color matched, but easily to replace with whatever you want. And it comes with three cables, a three meter, three meter straight, two 1.5s, one that includes a headphone jack, one that doesn't, okay? A headphone slash speaker. Very inconsistent. Audio-Technica are very inconsistent with their cabling. Everyone has a different set. That brings us to the, the MSR7B. Like I said, at the time of this review, we're December 2018. These have been released in Japan, but not officially released in North America yet. So you have to get these imported. Prices may vary. But you can see why I was so excited about these. Because I love the MSR7s. And this is an updated version of them. Hopefully, taking into account everything that people complained about the original MSR7s. In certain cases, I was very pleasantly surprised. In other ways, I was surprised, but not badly. It depends on what you're using them for. Comfort-wise, the first thing you're going to notice when you get these out of the box is that they're significantly lighter and significantly less clamping pressure. Now, like I said, the clamping pressure on the MSR7s is nothing to worry about. I wore them for hours, perfectly comfortable, but there's a bit of clamping force behind the ear. These have eliminated any indication of clamping force. I opened them up and I went, whoa, wow, that's light. You really don't feel the clamp. And when you've put them on, I've literally had kept these on my head for over an hour with no music, forgetting that they're there. So if the closest headphones I've ever put on my head to um, uh, feeling like they're not there, MSR7B is pretty much nails it on the spot. The padding is pretty much identical. The, the weight is a little bit lighter. Now, it's got a little bit of a creak, but the creak is because it's new plastic and you can feel that creak in the headband. You can hear it in the headband, but it doesn't have any of that ear, ear, ear stuff going on that happens here at the joint where the headphone pivots. Okay, so they've, they have eliminated that, at least for now. These are fairly new. I haven't broken them in that long. Apart from that, uh, comfort is fantastic. Now the cables, here's a bit of a con. There's two cables, but they're both only 1.5 meters. They're both proprietary mini coaxial dual balance cables. And one ends in a 3.5, one ends in a 4.4. I can't remember the exact measurement. You'll have to look it up online, but that's it. There's no three meters. There's no extended cable. So out of the box, you're only getting a limited option that is most ideal for putting, for plugging them into your headphone because they're both 35 ohm or 32, something like that. They're very low ohm. So you can power them on, you can power them with a, <laughs> you can power them on, on anything pretty much, right? But that's it. But I bought myself like a $10, Ten dollar uh, uh, extension cable, three point five millimeter extension cable. Problem solved. Not a big deal. But do take that into account. Okay, that's all it's coming with. At least the Japanese version that I purchased. Now, sound. Sound. This is the big surprise. Taking into account the fact that the MSR sevens, in my opinion, 
and I hopefully in your opinion too, have wonderful bass to them, just like the DT770s. Very nice, tight, satisfying bass that you can feel. They're not flat like the Sennheisers. These ones, a lot of people were complained that the MSR7s didn't have enough bass and they were hoping that there would be an enhancement in the bass. Well, it's actually the opposite. I find that the MSR7Bs have a little bit less bass. Now, before you shut off this video and you go, oh, screw that, okay? Try the MSR7s if you haven't yet, especially if you like the DT770s. The difference in bass between these two is about 1%. It's almost, it's pretty much negligible, but you're gonna notice it. I found on certain, certain tracks where certain basses would kick in, you do feel bass and it's very satisfying. It's still much more satisfying bass than the, than the, than the HD650s. HD650s are completely flat. These are not flat, but a little bit less lows than the MSR7s, okay? A little bit. Mids and highs are a little bit clearer on these, not a lot. It's basically what they've done is they've taken that entire sound signature and they went eh, and they just bumped the whole thing up by 1% all across the board. So the mids and the highs are a little bit more detail, which is significant for me because when I'm editing audio, one of the things I didn't notice as clearly on the MSR7s when I was, when I was equalizing my audio was when I swallow, which sorry for grossing you out, versus on my dynamic mic, this mic picks it up if I'm very close, if I'm chewing on the mic, right? And I noticed that I went, ooh, wow, I can really hear that on these because that added detail in the mids and I tweaked my audio. Or it also taught me to not swallow. If I have to swallow, move my head back and then come back to the mic. A lot of professional, uh, like a, a lot of professionals, if they need to burp or swallow or something like that, they move their mouth away from the mic. I, I learned that more clearly on these than the other ones without losing the satisfying sound. I can listen to my music, acoustic, Hans Zimmer, or I can listen to, you know, EDM, or not that I listen to that regularly, but any different varying range of music. And I get this nice, satisfying music, but a little bit more of a kick in the lows out of this. However, when listening to acoustic music and listening to nice, rich, textured voices, I pick up on it a little bit more on these. So Gregory Allen Isakoff for a lot of acoustic music. Classical music is equally satisfying on both because classical is not bass heavy anyways. Um, and they're very low ohm, so you can really keep your amp, my, my mix pre. On, on a 250 ohm, I have to bring my mix pre 3 up to around a 7 or 8 to get a nice loud signal. On these, I have it down at 4 or 5. And I'm like, I'm almost kicking the loudness beyond what it can, can. I've pushed the volume on these just to see if they distort in the lows. Not at all. They can handle they can handle more volume nicely. Not that I recommend doing it because it, I pushed it to a point where it would hurt the ears, right? But that's how I feel about the sound signature. Which ones am I going to keep? I'm going to keep the MSR7Bs. Why? Because all around, I'm still maintaining the satisfaction of the MSR7s while getting a little bit more usability in terms of sound mixing and a significant difference in terms of comfort and clamping pressure on the MSR7Bs. Um, although, if from where you're looking, if there's a significant price between the two, honestly, the differences between the two are fairly negligible with the minor increased uh, uh, difference in, in clamping pressure and weight between the two. But sound-wise, you're really not going to notice, notice a difference. I really love them both, but I'm going to end up keeping the MSR7Bs. I'm very happy with my purchase. They did a beautiful job. Um, I, that's all I have to say about that. And they can both be powered from, you, you, can, you, can, you can power them with your pinky finger, you know, with the, st the static, static energy that comes from your, from your blanket. <laughs> that's how low the, the homage, which by the way, I've, after testing multiple different headphones with multiple different ohms, all the way from 35 all the way up to like 600 or whatever, I might be exaggerating a bit, but um, apart from the power it takes to, to push them, when you've got those on, I've got ki my kids listening to Netflix at a decent volume, like five feet away from my head while I'm trying to mix audio. And once you've got those on your head, it drowns out 99% of sounds. If you're one of those sticklers that needs like the Bose QC35 completely cancels out humanity kind of sound canceling, fine, go for the Bose. But otherwise, I find that ohm is really overrated. <laughs> it just requires you to get a more powerful amp, which just comes at an added expense for a very negligible amount of sound canceling difference, in my personal opinion.
And it doesn't necessarily improve the sound quality as, as I demonstrated with the 250s and the 80 ohms of the DT770s. So hopefully you enjoyed today's review of the DT, of the ATH MSR7Bs. Highly recommended. Uh, you're going to have to check with Audio Technica. Keep track with them to find out when they're officially released. As far as I've heard, keep your eyes open around the end of 2018. So within the month, you might be hearing announcements, if not early 2019, if at all. All right. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Happy shopping and take care.